Well, if you had any hope for Andy Stanley, this video may disappoint you. Let's talk about it here on All Things Theology. All Things Theology, All Things Theology, we chop it up properly, without an apology, gotta get that theology to God, hollow because this is how we do it at All Things Theology. Yo, grace and peace, and welcome back to an episode of All Things Theology, where this is your host, K-Dub, and today, we're going to talk about Andy Stanley. Now, some of you guys have known, you follow this channel for a little while, you know I've critiqued Andy Stanley primarily over a few reasons. One, his view of scripture, which I believe is unbiblical, and two, his view on LGBT. It appears that uh, Andy Stanley is compromising and at best, he is not clear on the issue. I'm going to make a case that he is compromising in this video. If you haven't seen, Albert Moeller wrote an excellent article, which we're going to look at today, uh, really explaining some of the things I'm talking about right now, his uh, compromise and just at some time at times just not being clear on what he believes about the issue. So what I'm going to do right now is share my screen and we're going to look at the article here uh, titled The Train is Leaving the Station. Uh, Andy Stanley's departure from biblical Christianity. And I believe that's exactly what's going on here. It is a uh, departure from biblical Christianity. Um, so what we're going to do is go down. Uh, we're going to take a look here. He says, starting off, he says, it's not like we have, it's not like we have not seen this coming. Andy Stanley is set to host the unconditional conference at a campus, uh, at a campus of North Point Community Church in the metro area. Atlanta area in the coming days, and the website for the conference bills it as a two-day two premier event, especially designed for the parents of LGBTQ children and ministry leaders. Now, we're going to take a look at that conference here in a second, but I just want you to note, uh, Annie Stanley is hosting at his church an unconditional conference about uh, LGBTQ children, et cetera, et cetera. We'll, again, we'll take a look at that here. Uh, it says... Quoting from, I believe, the uh, uh, conference, it says, you will be equipped, refreshed and inspired as you hear from leading communicators on the topics that speak to your heart, soul and mind. It promises one statement stands out in this description. No matter what theological stance you hold, we invite you to listen, reflect and learn as we approach this topic from the quieter middle space. Now, <laughs> anytime you see that language. What you actually have is not a middle space, but you actually have a left space. And again, I'm going to demonstrate that as we, uh, uh, you know, talk about this conference. Albert Mola goes on and says the promise of the quieter middle space might appear attractive given the uh, volatility of cultural discourse on LGBTQ plus issues and a conference designed to help parents of LGBTQ plus children and ministry. Uh, work through these issues in clearly biblical terms would be a welcome development, right? That's what you would think, right? We're going to be nuanced. We're going to help children who maybe or parents that whose children who have come out homosexual. I would be totally for that, right? You're going to give them a biblical right response, but as, as we're going to see, that's not what's going to happen at this uh, conference. And yes, I can say that even before uh, they speak on the issue, um, but maybe we'll have to do some commentary after the, uh, uh, you know, sessions come out. It says, but the advertising for the unconditional conference indicates indicates clearly that the event is designed as a platform for normalizing the LGBTQ plus revolution while claiming that the conference represents the quieter middle space. And that in lies the issue. It claims to be the middle ground, but it's actually promoting an agenda, right? It says in truth, there is no middle space on these issues and it's no longer plausible to claim that such middle space exists. Amen, uh, Albert Moeller. As the saying goes, there is no new neutrality when it comes to these moral issues. This is the myth of neutrality, as, as I'm going to say, the myth of the middle space, <laughs> right? Scheduled speakers for the event include, notice who's going to come speak at this conference, this middle space conference. Uh, some of the speakers include two men who are married to other men, at least according to current civil law, right? Yes, obviously we reject that it is a, a, a biblical marriage, a marriage in any, uh, you know, before God sense. But, you know, according to the uh, uh, contortion of civil law in America, yes. Um, it says biographical background on speakers, Justin Lee and Brian Netzel indicates that both men 
are in what are now described as same-sex marriages. So yes, this is totally sounds middle space, right? Uh, Lee is well known as platform speaker who argues for the legitimacy of a uh, monogamous same-sex relationships. That's interesting if he's uh, married. But anyways, uh, Netzel presents seminars on restoring LGBTQ plus faith. Just to be clear, this is not the quieter middle space. And as I've been saying all along, <laughs> I agree. Um, and I'm very familiar with um, Justin Lee. Uh, a few years ago, he was a part of the Reformation Project with Matthew Vines, another homosexual advocate. Again, once you dive into some of these, uh, you know, homosexual advocates, quote unquote, gay Christians, right? Uh, you you just kind of find some of these names out and kind of see some of these things. Um, but yes, Netzel, heard of him. And we'll find some other people that also uh, like this. Another speaker is David Gushy. Yeah, David Gushy is a promoter of, uh, this is me speaking, not the article, uh, of homosexual uh, gay Christianity as, as it is uh, often called. Uh, but Continue with the article, uh, David Gushy, a prominent intellectual, has been honest about his own change of mind on the moral status of LGBTQ plus behaviors and relationships. In this definitive edition of his book, Changing Our Mind, right? Notice that. So we have a repentance here, according to this <laughs> language, a subtitle as landmark call for the inclusion of the LGBTQ Christians. He traces his own pilgrimage to eager LGBTQ plus Advocacy in the book, Gushy states that he will grant the historical claim that the church has believed that same sex acts and relationships are always wrong. But the book traces his change over time to a position in which he clearly asserts that the Christian church has been historically wrong on this issue. So he's arguing that when it comes to homosexuality, uh, not even homosexuality, LGBTQ plus issues, the church has been, I mean, abysmally wrong. I mean, not even close. I mean, that that would have to be the argument he presented. It seems that is his argument. Um, he says, in this book and in other presentations, Gushy is clear about his position, his reasoning, his reading of the Bible, and his conclusions. So going on with the article, it says, I appreciate his honesty and the clarity which which he makes his arguments. Furthermore, I am pretty confident that Gushy would agree that the issues at stake in this in this debate reflect the deepest issues of conviction in our understanding of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and how we read the Bible. So true. What we face here is an honest disagreement over fundamental convictions. As Gushy writes, I am instead asking whether devout gay and lesbian Christians might be able to participate in the covenantal marital uh, sexual ethic standard, one person for life, faithful and ex exclusive and loving, non-explosive, non-coercive, reciprocal relationship that is the highest expression of Christian sexual ethics, which in fact, a golly number are already doing. I can't find a compelling reason to say no anymore. Well, you know, once you get rid of the Bible, then sure, there isn't any compelling reason. But I would push back. This is me talking about the article. I would push back once you get rid of the, you know, uh, you know, heterosexual, you know, male, female relationship. Why not get rid of the one? So why not have a poly relationship, right? What, who says we can't have 50 people in a marriage, right? Why, why not add all sorts of uh, absurd things, right? Because once you, once you can't find a compelling reason to say no anymore to male, female, who says everything else should be, you know, why, why do you find a compelling reason to say yes to one person? Why, you know, again, th this is a consistency matter that I'm trying to uh, bring out. Um, let's see. Let's continue. It says, uh, that is about as clear a statement as we might imagine. It is absolutely free from evasion or confusion. That's correct. And, and, and one sense, I appreciate David Gushy's, uh, clarity. I wish we can find as much clear, explicit, um, from Andy Stanley, but that is not the case. Add to the, continue with the article, article, add to the declaration, the fact that the unconditional conference will include two men married to other men as speakers or present uh, presenters none of this is hidden but it is falsely presented as the quieter middle space but as gushy has acknowledged and lamented the christian church has clearly and consistently and until recently virtually unanimously <laughs> understood the bible to forbid all same-sex behaviors and to authorize sexual expression only with the 
only within marriage as the covenant union of man as as woman. Yeah, it doesn't sound like a a uh, quiet middle space you guys are presenting, but you guys are uh, you know attacking historical biblical ethics you know in marriage, uh, and that's exactly what um, Al Mohler goes on to say. The conference is not really quiet, nor is it middle space. It is structured as what most evangelicals would quickly recognize as a departure from historic norma of biblical Christianity. That's exactly right. That doesn't sound like a, a middle space. Starting the section on Andy, this is why this part is important. Andy Stanley, one of the most influential pastors in the United States, has been moving in this direction for years. Now, some of you may say, wait, hold on, years? Continue with the article, often by suggestion and assertion, but clouded by confusion and the deliberate avoidance of clarity. That's correct. Back in 2018, he called for the church to be unhitched from the Old Testament, arguing that the Old Testament should not be understood as the go-to source regarding any behavior in the church, right? You guys remember all this kerfuffle about unhitched from the Old Testament, right? Those are Jewish scriptures, not Christian scriptures, and it seems at this point he's unhitching from all of the Bible. Uh, continue with the article, he says, uh, there goes, you shall not die with a male as a woman, right? It is an abomination, Leviticus 8, 18, 22, which is the foundational argument for Paul's reasoning for why homosexuality is wrong in the New Testament. So actually saying unhitching from the Old Testament doesn't actually solve many of your problems when it comes to this issue. Um, uh, going on, it says, but in truth, there goes the entire Old Testament. Absolutely. A few years before that, in 2012, in a 2012 message, Stanley are, seemed to argue that adultery is a sin, but told of two men in a relationship with no suggestion that the same sex coupling was forbidden by scripture. Now, I know I did a video on that, so I'll have to link to that description where he, he, he didn't actually uh, condemn uh, homosexuality, but he was willing to condemn the adultery. In that uh, relationship, he says, when the message became controversial, Stanley did not clarify the situation at all. More recently, in another message, Stanley dismissed biblical texts against homosexuality behavior as cobbler, cop, clobber verses and said, if your theology gets in the way of ministry, like if there's somebody you can't minister because of your theology, you have the wrong theology. Yeah. And you already know you're talking to a uh, a proponent of homosexuality when they refer to these passages as clobber passages, right? Continuing with the article, it says, this is not a mis misunderstanding. This is a trajectory that points to the unconditional conference and two speakers married to other men on the platform. This is a clear departure from biblical Christianity. That's correct. Uh, the conference has not been held yet. Uh, no doubt there will be a good deal of conversation once it has been held. Maybe the conference will surprise us and Stanley will present a resounding affirmation of biblical authority, highly unlikely, <laughs> and the Christian church's longstanding convictions concerning sexuality, uh, marriage, and gender. But that will require a reversal of Stanley's trajectory and a bold correction to of his platform guests. Yeah. To state the obvious, this is not what he is what is advertised. He has been working his direction for years now. Sadly, it looks like the train is about to leave the station and i i fundamentally agree with everything that uh, Rob, uh albert moeller has stated in his article and just to so further solidify the case what i'm going to do is go to the unconditional conference website you know so you guys can see for yourself what i and albert moeller is, are talking about so if you go to um the website i mean what you get here is embrace the journey so embrace the journey embracing the journey is a uh, <laughs> affirming ministry that literally teaches parents how to deal with their LGBTQ children. And that has never involved repentance. Um, even for this, right. Join us for this two day, join us for the unconditional conference on September 28th and 29th. It's going to be in Atlanta, right? A two day premiere event for Christian parents with LGBT Christians. Right. And so thankfully this is right after uh, G3. <laughs> so, <laughs> Right. Um, yeah, just, I just want to get you to show, show you something. Right. So the speakers, Greg and Lynn McDonald, they're LGBT affirming. Right. Uh, Andy Stanley, we kind of see in his trajectory. Uh, Debbie Cossey, she's LGBTQ affirming. Justin Lee, he's gay. He's right. One of the uh, people that uh, Albert Moeller were talking about. He's in a homosexual marriage. Uh, one of the things that I did was 
I and I did this with a few people. I did this with a few people. I Google the these so there's breakout speakers. I Google some of the speakers' names and I just typed in homosexuality or LGBTQ uh, and see what saw what popped up. And I did this with about four or five of the speakers that I didn't know. And literally every one of them were affirming on the issue uh, that is affirming LGBT. Uh, I did that with this Julie Sadusky. Uh, I know David Gushy. He's a homosexual proponent. I uh, did this with uh, all three of these or Lachey. I did it with, yeah, some of these other people, uh, Pastor Jenny Boyet, Boyet or whatever you pronounce her name. Uh, and all these people were a- affirming. Obviously, I know Brian Nettle. He's in a quote unquote homosexual marriage. And just some of the topics were interesting, too. Um, my goodness. Right. Wrestling with theology, pointing towards Jesus, uh, understanding gender dysphoria, the transgender journey. Hmm. Uh, ministering to LGBTQ plus youth today. Right. Uh, just so many of these topics that are LGBTQ plus faith and stories. Right. So so all so many of these topics are not coming from an issue of presenting the Bible's position on this, but affirming these issues and then teaching people how to uh deal with apostasy essentially how to deal how to compromise you know you know and so um again i believe albamola was right the train is leaving the station but andy stanley has long left the train right he's no longer on the train he's no longer on the bus that is the bible and so again if you have any hope for andy i, I think this should be dwindling obviously god can do a supernatural work that's not what's in in view here the issue is where he is now what is he presenting why would any man who believes what the bible has to say on homosexuality uh marriage uh ethics uh, why would someone have a uh all these homosexuals come and gay affirming people to present you know something that he doesn't believe obviously i, I believe he's compromising on the issue and this has been long in in the works and so again dating back to 2012 and so hopefully this was uh informative hopefully you enjoyed it guys so the next time grace and peace yo grace and peace thank you for watching another episode of all things theology if you enjoyed what you heard today go and give me a like subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell i promise to give you weekly videos lives interactions exposing false teachers sharing with you the viewer my theological beliefs things about the culture and the bible So if you're here for that, come on and join us.